Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. What are you doing? The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. It's time for Hot Topics. If you don't multitask, nothing will ever get accomplished. Can we agree on that? Yes. So last night I'm in the bed, I'm watching the VH1 Hip Hop Honors. It was fantastic. Yes. At the same time, our dishwasher's on the fritz, so I'm you know, looking for new dishwashers and watching. But it was great last night. Look, they paid tribute to hip hop's biggest female artists. All of them I love, they look fantastic. Missy Elliott, <laughs> Queen Latifah, Salt and Peppa and Little Kim and many more were there. It just, you know, just a day gone by, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, Eve did a great, Eve, you did a terrific job hosting. And by the way, I loved your outfit. And I must tell you, Eve is like super winning. You know, like, like Eve, well she'll be here tomorrow to remind you of how she's winning. But. Eve's got that billionaire for a husband. And she's a stepmom now. And it's probably only a matter of time before she has a child by him. And she doesn't have to make music ever, ever again. So it's nice that she came out of the palace to host that. And she, I thought she looked terrific. Good for you, Eve. And Queen Latifah looked great also. She performed a medley of her hits. Yup. She did come into my house and Latifah's had it up to here, okay? I just, you know, and then Faith, Faith Evans, friend to our show, I've known Faith since forever. And Faith introduced Little Kim. Now remember, Faith was married to Biggie and Little Kim was having an affair with Biggie while Faith was married to the late, great B.I.G. Well, the women have come together all these years later and Faith actually introduced Kim and Kim got on stage and I thought did a wonderful job. Always nice seeing the legends. <laughs> Always. <clears throat> Especially when they're women. Yay! I'm just saying, just saying. But you know, here's a dumb man showing up, messing up the whole thing. Now I don't know Rich Homie Kwan. That's for my son's generation. All right, so he performed um, with Kim um, Biggie's verses on Get Money. Now you're familiar with the song Get Money, right? Yes. Now I'll be 52 next Monday. But, no, no, no. But I say all that to say, you know, I consider myself part of the foundation of hip hop. And there comes a point in your life where you're a little embarrassed because I'm 51 in a nice lady-like dress talking to you nice people, but I have hood tendencies. <laughs> and when Rich Homie Kwan got up there and for, you didn't, first of all, if you're doing a tribute, you always study the lyrics, dummy. Yeah. Yeah. 
second of all, if you think that you're gonna slip and not remember a lyric, then you ask the lyrics to be put in the prompter. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Now, I'll refresh you, Quan. <laughs> you wanna sip mo on my living room flow. Play Nintendo, Caesar Lee, oh. Pick up the phone, say, Papa not home. Sex all night, man, in the moan. Spend my cheese, smoke all my weed. Tattoo on bleep saying, B-I, did I do too much? Do we have to pay for that now? <laughs> <laughs> How much does that cost? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> I mean, that's part of like the soundtrack of my life. Like, Rich Homie Kwan um, was, um, was five when the song came out. So people in Hot Topics meeting were trying to give him a pass. I said, nope. He, you know, exactly, Marco. No pass on forgetting the words to get money. And you know what? From now on, Quan, this is like he's got on a Coogee. That's what Biggie used to wear. Like you have the, the look down, but what happened? And from now on, Quan and the rest of you artists, when you forget lyrics, just do what the rest of them do. Hold the mic to the audience. <laughs> and let them do their work, okay? <laughs> so embarrassed. It's so weird having a hip hop family, you know what I mean? Like, when me and my husband and our boy are riding in the car, and you know he's 15 years old, and my husband and I, we've got, well, we've got ways about us. You can hear the best of Nas, Ghostface, Raekwon, Busta Ron, like we are in the car thumping in the front seat. <laughs> And the boy is in the back, and I can only imagine how he's judging, especially because I'm sure he hears his mom at high decibels knowing every word to every song. Whose world is this? The world is yours, eh? I mean, you, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's, it's weird when you like a lot of the same music as your kid, that's all. It's, it's weird, but whatever. So Nick Cannon um, might have a surprising new romance that Hot Topics believes. I, oh police, I don't believe this for two seconds. But it is my duty to get out here and you know tell you the news. Okay, Chili from TLC. Oh. Well, 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 okay, okay. No. They've reportedly been friends for years and they were spotted um, at a concert in Rochester, New York on Saturday night. Wow. Now TLC's on the old school tour, which I would love to see that, you know, over the, you know, like old school music. Oh. Anyway. And so Nick was in Chicago, but, and, which is uh, over six, uh, 600 miles away from Rochester. And, but Nick got there in time to watch what they're calling his girl. Drive by, maybe. Girlfriend, Noah. Anyway, sources are claiming that they were kissing and couldn't keep their hands off each other. Well, I get it. You know, have you ever met a little hot thing that, that you don't want for a boyfriend, but maybe you just wanna feel up on something? I mean, Nick is 35 and Chili is 45 and Hot Topics goes on to try to convince me, well, Wendy, you know Nick likes older women, Mariah is 46. Yeah. I said, no, no, this is, that, the, the, no, that is not, <laughs> that is not a real thing. Chili, as a matter of fact, has had a very difficult time with men. Yeah, so, um, but no, I don't, I don't picture Nick Cannon and Chili anything more than a little, uh, as Laverne and Shirley would say, Vodio Doe. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. They used to say Vodio Doe? <laughs> <laughs> so, our longtime friend Shaka Khan has checked into rehab. Oh. Well, the big thing about having problems is acknowledging them and then getting the help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So Shaka's got a sister named Taka. <laughs> Taka Khan. No, but, but Shaka's real name is Yvette. And the sister's real name is Yvonne. 
but they're only two years apart, which is fabulous to me, you know, to be close to your sister, like in age and stuff. And they both entered rehab together. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Shock has been through a lot. You know, this is not her first um, time at the rehab. Remember, she was in there with Lindsay Lohan, and she and Lindsay became uh, friendly. I don't know whether they're still friends, but I was telling you about that, you know, a few years ago here on Hot Topics. But Shaka is reportedly um, addicted to the same prescription um, uh, medication that killed Prince. Aww. And you know, Shaka and Prince, they're, con they're contemporaries. So, you know, when somebody passes away and they're contemporaries, contemporary, it really does make you look and say, oh my gosh, I'm next. I gotta do something, you know, to, to do better. So um, she says that it, it was um, Prince's death that prompted her to seek treatment. Shaka um, broke a hip or something years ago. Like a knee. knee. She knee. broke, oh, a knee? She had knee yeah. surgery. That's surgery. even worse. <laughs> I'd rather break a knee than a hip, or a hip than a knee. Cause at least with a hip, you know, you, 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 know, you might wobble a little bit, but your, but your knees, a trick knee makes you fall down. <laughs> anyway, that's when she was prescribed the same drug that um, allegedly killed Prince. And she became a little too addictive, addicted to that drug. And she saw that when Prince passed away, it's time for help. And I don't know what Taka's um, you know, addiction was, but I like that you know, the sisters are doing it together. Um, good luck to both of you. Good luck. You know what, there's something nasty though floating in my tea. Somebody trying to do me in around here? I know we're, by the way, the, the, the chair is going to need cleaning while we're on hiatus. <laughs> I've wiped many things on it through the season. In case you're not aware, you know, I wipe my teeth and then I go like, th I know you all see everything, all right? Anyway, <laughs> I can't even sip it. <laughs> Do you know who Peter Thomas used to, used to date? Which I was shocked. Peppa! <laughs> right! Rich homie Kwan, that would be Peppa got pissed and pulled out a pump. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what? Remembering lyrics from back in the day also keeps your mind sharp. You know, like when you forget your lyrics, then that means something's going on. Anyway, um, on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, yeah, there's, there's Pep and there's Peter Thomas, and he calls her Sandy, because that's her government name, and they used to date. But Peter Thomas, you know him more probably now, being um, Cynthia's almost ex-husband on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Cynthia Bailey. Well, they're divorcing. Oh. No, because we've been reading about this for a while, but it's really going down. And Peter kind of confirmed it by talking out about it. He says that he was blindsided by the divorce announcement because he thought that they were separated and it was all good. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's easy to think it's all good when your wife is in Atlanta and you're in one of the Carolinas, you know, opening up, you know, one of your speakeasies. People don't use that anymore, but it needs, we need to bring it back. <laughs> anyway, he says that he found out that Cynthia wants a divorce from the E! News. Now here's the, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know, this is the problem with TV and social media. Some people find out the most pertinent information of their lives the way the rest of us do. Either watching Hot Topics or watching the E! News or the Entertainment Tonight or The Insider or my friend Deborah Norville on the Inside Edition or something like that. It's weird. Anyway, um, yeah, they're getting a divorce. But you know what, Peter? Not for nothing. And Cynthia's 48 years old and Peter is 56. And 48 is the sweet spot. There comes a time in every woman's life where if you've been done wrong, 
But you also realize, you know, this is about as good as it's gonna get. Bef you know what I'm saying? Ladies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before it starts to change and get gelatinous. <laughs> and everything falls to the floor. Do you it happens to all of us, it, you know? So 48 is that sweet spot. If you're gorge like her at 48, this is the time that you weigh in. Hmm, I can get another at this point, you know, before everything falls and gets, you know, like I can get another. Do I want another? Do we work this out? Do I stay with him? Like men, you all have the luxury of staying reasonably good looking all of you all's lives. And even when you get ugly and fat, there's always gonna be some girl who wants you because the ratio of men to women just seems to be off in the world. You know, yes, sir, I was talking to you. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. And by the way, welcome back to the show. He's been here many times. I recognize him. Yes, thank you for coming. I see, I see you got the memo, we're, we're dressed alike. Anyway, so Peter, oh well, oh hell. So you're getting a divorce. So what you found out through the E! News, as, you know, for as much stuff that we've read about on blogs and stuff that you've done to our girl, I'm surprised. You go, Cynthia. Another person I really like, Hilary Duff. Yay. I like her. <clears throat> and she um, divorced her hockey player husband, Mike. They have a child together. I think the kid is like three or four years old. Four. four. Mm -hmm. He used to play hockey, but then he slipped his crick. And, and, and you know, when you slip a crick, you can't, you can't play the sports anymore. So then he's laying on the couch taking care of the kids. A lot of men are not comfortable sitting at home while their wife is working all day. So it was, I guess, causing problems in the relationship and, and he's still young enough to play. It's just that when you have a slip crick, you can't play. <laughs> so they tried to make it work, you all, but they couldn't make it work, so they got a divorce. Oh. So now, no, th I told you that. Here's the update. <laughs> Here's the update. So Hillary is uh, dating, and Mike is showing up unannounced, allegedly using his key and coming in, calling every single moment of the day, and all too involved in her personal life. Well, now, Mike, you need um, something to do to occupy your time. You know, I appreciate that you and Hillary are great as co-parents, but if you can't have her, please don't try to claw her and make her stay. You know, happy Hillary is gonna make a happy you. Like she's not, you know, and a happy you is gonna make a happy her, and both of you is happy are gonna make a happy kid. So she can't move on, like, okay. She's got, she's dating, okay. So she's got this boyfriend. <laughs> Only one that I know of. All right, all right. And there he is, okay, there, there, yeah, the boyfriend, the boyfriend, okay. So another reason that Hillary is not able to move on other than you know Mike showing up at any given moment and calling all the time is that they still share the same circle of friends. Aww. Now, here's the deal. Okay, Mike's guy buddies have become, or, or who are married, their wives are like good friends with Hillary. And so when Hillary tells one of the girls something. You know how pillow talk, you, you know how pillow talk works, right? <laughs> if you don't know how it works, then, then you don't, you don't, I mean, pillow talk. Even when you say, no, I'm not gonna tell anybody. <laughs> there's always somebody that you tell. And usually that person is occupying the pillow next to you. <laughs> you know, so through pillow talk, these girls are telling Hillary's business to their guy, and I guess the guy is going back, the guys, and telling Mike stuff. Not that Mike can be pissed, but just the idea, you know, when you get a divorce, you don't want your ex all up in your biz like that. Hillary, number one, changed the locks. <laughs> number one.
<laughs> I know that you're a very wealthy woman. Uh, maybe you have a gated community. Tell the gate not to let him commune until, <laughs> until they call you at the compound to tell you that he's coming. And number three, cut all those broads out of your life. Like, to me, it's not, it's not that, okay, nobody clap. All right, well, look. No, 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 no. I know, maybe 50-50, but here, here's my thing about relationships outside of romance. They will never supersede the romantical part, you know? So if these girls are talking, then you can't be friends with them, or at least don't talk to them about your love life. But even with that, in, you know, in mind, these are the same girls, if you go out, you know, for dinner with them, they're gonna tell their husbands, looks like Hillary gained about 10 pounds. <laughs> and then the guys call, I mean, every, Hillary bought new shoes. <laughs> Hillary got a new car. Hillary's going to Capri for the holiday. I don't want people in my business like that, and it's not worth it to keep these chicks around. You're Hillary Duff, anyone, and a nice woman. Anybody would be proud to be friends with you, but I think you might have to dump these girls to keep your privacy. My thought. Anyway, everyone, uh, keep clapping. We've got more great show for you. Do you watch Power? I love Power. We got the power today. The stars of the hit show Power are here, but up next, it's time for a special edition of Celebrity Lookalikes. So grab a snack and come on back.